Hey everyone, Andang here for more of Mordor. When we last left off, we were getting ready to talk to Mithrandir after talking to Iroizen and hearing his crazy, just basically talking about how horrible wizards are, which, to be fair, from his perspective, wizards are probably horrible and lie all the time and do all sorts of stuff because they don't know Mithrandir, the apparently only good wizard aside from Radagast in the whole entirety of Middle-earth. So let's go ahead and talk, buddy. He is impudent, and he is impolite, and he is abrasive. Mithrandir raises an eyebrow, and the faintest hint of a smile emerges beneath his beard. He may also be useful. I have had an idea. Oh, no. Never. <laughs> Every time Mithrandir has an idea, it ends up us doing some crazy sort of thing, like, you know, riding in eagles to go save Frodo and Sam. This is not going to be good, I have a feeling. But, you know, he's giving out jewelry, so it's, it's fine. Mordor has been closed to the eyes of Gondor for more than a thousand years. Ever since the fall of Durthand, and the expulsion of the Thandrim, what transpired beneath the Shroud of Gorgoroth remained unknown to us, and it brewed a bitter cup of rumor, and worry, and fear. That was in aid of Sauron's plans, as ever, for he knew the uses of fear better than any creature in this Middle-earth. But we have one in our keeping who witnessed the last days of the War of the Ring from the other side. Aroizen walked in Mordor when the peoples of Gondor and indeed of all Middle-earth could not pass the bounds of that land. What did he see? What does he know? He claims he was involved in high councils of war. Perhaps that is true, and perhaps it is not. But there is no question that he may have knowledge of Sauron's lieutenants that we simply do not. Can he be forgiven of his crimes? If he can be so forgiven, he might be given a new life in Gondor in exchange for the information he possesses about Mordor and the power structure in the Black Land after the downfall of Sauron. Speak to Aragorn. It must be he who will forgive Aroizen of these crimes, if any will. Oh man, that sounds pretty cool actually. I like this plotline so far. Let's talk to Aragorn here. I have considered making a place in Gondor for the Nornhoth. But does Iorzen merit the same treatment? I have already been approached about making a place for the Nernhoth in Gondor, for their enslavement in Mordor has stirred the hearts of the folk who freed them. I do not know if Iorzen merits the same treatment, Andang. The Nernhoth were cruelly mistreated by their overlords in Adun and elsewhere. Freedom was just a distant, half-remembered tale to them, so we're just now talking to Aragorn and finding out, oh hey, I have all these plans to save all these people that you've just freed and led on this, like, rise up in Mordor in this crazy plotline that ended up in most of them, like, being basically slaughtered, where we could have just gone to talk to Aragorn and he would have been like, yeah, they can come in Gondor, no problem. That made the, in this statement right here, made the entire plotline of a dune completely worthless, basically. Except for the fact that we found out, like, who the villain was. But the entire, like, liberation movement and trying to find the other orc and doing all the other different things was completely pointless. By that one sentence, it's so weird. Anyway, let's continue along. But Iroizen led armies against us. He commanded his people to fight during the war. And many good men died on Krundalar blades before the White City. This is not an easy choice to make. Aragorn is silent for a moment, considering. Then he comes to a decision. The words of Mithrandir have not oft led me astray, Andeng. Aroizen will be given a new start in Gondor, in return for the knowledge he can give to us of Mordor. Speak to the wagon driver, Rathnor, and arrange for Aroizen's passage to the city. Oh, dang. I did not see all this coming. Okay, let's talk to the wagon driver here. What's that? Another fellow needs passage back to the city. 
Aye, I'll accommodate him. There won't be much room, but I've got a little more space if folk are willing to sit close. You should tell Aroizen that he will have a place in Gondor. What is it? You tell Aroizen that the King of Gondor has agreed to bargain. Aroizen will be given a home in Gondor and his crimes washed away in exchange for what he knows about the situation in Mordor. The Easterling studies you carefully, and then he breaks into laughter. <laughs> How grand ending! An offer of a pardon from Gondor! I spit at this offer! I am not interested in the charity of this king or any other. I have not yet decided which side in this contest will be the victor. Why then would I ally myself with any of you? I have seen nothing to prove that Gondor will triumph in the days to come, but I know of many dangers that lurk still in Golgoroth, waiting. Your people have brought Nernoth through the Black Gate and freed them from captivity. I have an exercise for you. Speak these names to them, and ask yourself why I would side with Gondor, when there are foes in Golgoroth such as these still alive, still active, and still angry. Speak the name Dolgabeth. Speak the name Ogrukor. Speak the name Urdani. Does Gondor possess such terrors as these? I think it does not. All right, buddy. Well, let's go tell all of them the horror stories of Mordor, apparently. He was the mouth of Sauron. Vile knights rode at his command. It Lee shudders when you ask him about Dolgoreth, and clenches his fist. I can tell you nothing of him that a dozen others could not. He was the mouth of Sauron, and his knights rode at his command. They plucked me from my village by the sea, and marched me long leagues to Odun, where I was put to work at the forges. I only saw the mouth once, from afar, for he was too busy with Sauron's errands to spend time tormenting the Nernhoth. But Sauron is gone, and if the mouth had a tongue tie, it is now off him. We should not be speaking of him here. So close to Mordor, it will bring ill fortune. Speak no more to me of him. Okay, not a fan of the mouth of Sauron. I mean, it's probably the teeth. You don't like the teeth. I get it, buddy. Okay, let's continue on. Hukukor knows no mercy. He delights in death. Who just stares at you with wide eyes. And when he speaks, it is no more than a whisper. Agurukor, he is the captain of the pit. He knows no mercy. He delights in death. Tears well in his eyes as he speaks. His face, terribly scarred, but not always. They say Sauron punished him, punished him for something, held him, held him to the fire. Huja falls silent and will speak no more. But his trembling persists for some time. Dang, the big bands of Sauron still persist. You should not speak of Urdani. Aram stares at you coldly. You should not speak of Urdani. They say if you speak her name, she hears it and will come. Her kiss is death. Her embrace torment. Have we not suffered enough? Let stone maiden slumber and awaken her not. Dang, lots of terrified people here. No wonder he doesn't want to speak to us. Do you see? Sauron may be gone, but his servants were many. And they were beings of power and terror. I have not seen anything of Gondor that can hope to stand against even these three. And that is not the full extent of his lieutenants. And so I become my Roy's in the unwilling, and refuse this so-called king's offer of a pardon. 
I will remain between the realms until I taste which way the wind blows. Right now, the breeze is rank, and it comes from Gorgoroth. I believe Iorzin will still be useful to us. I hold that Iorzin will still be useful to us. Indeed, he has already been so. For I think the artifact he stole from Durthang can be made to serve our purposes. And further, he has given us an idea of the evils that await us within Gorgoroth. The shadow that hangs on Mordor is too deep for you to pierce it without powerful help. But pierce it you must, if you are to combat the villains of whom he spoke. The artifact Iorzin stole from the vault of Durthong bears a powerful corruption. Okay, looks like we got a deed for the Shadow of Mordor and can indeed confirm that the story will continue in more chapters than the first four here. I have studied the artifact that Iroisen stole from the vault of Durthang. It bears a powerful corruption, but it was not made in the land of Morador. It came from elsewhere, and the corruption that envelops it stems from its long stay in the Black Land. If this evil could be cleansed, I believe that Elrond could imbue it with a powerful and vital force for good. Of course we get to go back to Elrond, why would we not be? Before that can happen, however, we must do something about the corruption that Mordor has worked upon it. There are different methods to accomplish this, though the wise disagree about the effectiveness of each. My preferred means for such a cure is to bring the corrupted item to the place where it was made, or to places of some significance upon its path and to thereby diffuse the foul touch of Mordor that has, in the interim, claimed it. We must learn the story of this heirloom before it came to Mordor. The wizard turns the artifact over in his hands, studying it for some clue to the, its origins. To your eye, the heirloom is a small, carved sculpture of a woman. One hand is raised before her, as if in warding. And in the other, she holds a spear, ready to throw. Oh, it's pine leaf. Clearly, it's just a pine leaf figurine. I see that they're selling well in Mordor, apparently, pine leaf. So good job, buddy. This sculpture was carved from a bone or tusk, but I cannot say what creature lent the material used in its manufacture. Some of the details have worn away with the passage of time or ill treatment. The face, for example, may once have been carved, but now cannot be distinguished. There seems to be some runes on the base of the carving, but they are quite faded, and I cannot read them clearly. But this carving is for sure not a fake, and therefore can be sold to any pawn shop in Minas Tirith. But this is not the first such carving I have seen. No... I have seen others of its type drawn from the swamps of the Lone Lands. The Aglaine plump the depths of the marshes for artifacts and trinkets, and in the muck they have found similar sculptures. Go to Oscaruth, the ruin hold in the Lone Lands, and ask for Frederick, the Elder, what he can tell you about this heirloom. Okay, so apparently it's not ready to sell at the pawn shop yet. We have to go find the expert in the Lone Lands, and then they'll be able to tell us. Okay, here we go all the way back to the Lone Lands, because why not? That sounds like a great idea. Thank you, Black Book of Mordor, for being just as bad with travel as the epic story. Alright, well before we go to the Lone Lands, I think this is actually a good place to end this episode off. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave it a like down below. And I'll see you again real soon when we go to talk to Frederick and get the item identified so we can sell it at a pawn shop in Minas Tirith. But of course, that is not till next time. Thank you everyone so much for watching and I'll see you again real soon for more of Mordor.